Hi students, welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn how to find the length of a line segment. Right, let's do a recap on how the Cartesian plane will look like. It comprises of the x axis and the y axis and the origin. Next, we're going to see how a point will look like on the Cartesian plane. Right, so I have a point that's indicated on the screen. And this point, right, I have drawn some uh, doctor lines, vertical doctor lines from the point touching the x axis. So here, the horizontal distance of the point from the y axis will be 5 units. Therefore, the x coordinates of the point will be 5. And the next thing is that I'm going to draw some horizontal some uh, dotted horizontal dotted lines of the point to the y-axis and here the vertical distance will be three units hence the y-coordinates of this point will be three so a point comprises of the x-coordinates and also the y-coordinates let's try another point in this case here that green point have x coordinate 6, meaning it has 6 units from the y axis and 1 unit from the x axis. Right, supposing I have two points here. The first point is 1, 2, second point is 6, 2. And if I'm going to join these two points with a horizontal line, would you be able to find the length of this line segment? Yes, we are able to. That would be 6 minus 1 gives you 5 units. How do we get 6? Because for this point here, the x coordinate is 6. Therefore, the horizontal distance from the y axis will be 6 units. And for the first point, the x coordinate is 1. That means the horizontal distance here will be 1 unit. That explains how we get 6 minus 1 equals to 5 units. So we can find horizontal distance quite easily by taking, if I'm going to label this point as x2 y2 and this one as x1 y1 right then the horizontal distance will just be x2 minus x1 right now let's look at another example supposing i have two points one is 2 comma 1 and one is 2 comma 4 Right, if we're going to join both points with the line segment, we can see that it is actually a vertical line. And how are we going to find the length of this vertical line? Yes, it will be 4 minus 1 give you 3 units because the distance of this point from the x axis will be 4 units. And the distance of this point from the x axis will be 2, will be 1 unit. So therefore, 4 minus 1 gives you 3 units. So that is how you can find the length of a vertical line. Right, let's look at another example. Given 2 points, 2 comma 2 and 6 comma 4. If we're going to join both lines with a line segment, we can clearly see that this line segment, which we're going to call it L, is not a horizontal line, neither it is a vertical line. It's actually a slanted line. So we can't basically just take 6 minus 2 or 4 minus 2, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to form a triangle, basically a right angle triangle. And then it's quite easily that we can find this, the length of this vertical line, uh, sorry, horizontal line, and the length of this vertical line. So the, verti the horizontal line will be 4 units. The vertical line, you can see also quite clearly it's, 
two units. Right. So what does a right angle triangle remind you of? Which theorem does it remind you of? Yes, we can use the Pythagoras theorem. So in other words, your Pythagoras theorem, if you recall, right, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So in this case here, I'm going to replace the letter c with the letter l. So l squared is equal to 4 squared. This could be your length a. This could be your length b. So l squared is equal to 4 squared plus 2 squared. That gives you 20. And therefore, l is square root 20. Which if you use a calculator to evaluate, it's 4.47 units. Right, we're going to extend the knowledge to finding the line segment of two generic points. Supposing a point A, which I'm not going to label it as x1, y1, and point B as x2, y2. I'm going to join these two points using the line segment. Alright, so the next thing is to form a right angle triangle. And then the point there, right, this point here will have the same x coordinate as point A. Oh, sorry. This point here, uh, rewind, rewind. This point here. will have the same x coordinate as point B because this point is directly below point B. This point here is directly below point B, so it will have the same x coordinate of point B, which is x2. And this point here is on the same horizontal line as point A, and it will have the same y coordinate as point A. So therefore, this point here is x2, y2. So the next thing is I'm going to find the horizontal distance, which is just basically x2 minus x1, and then find the vertical distance, which is just basically y2 minus y1. All right, so we're going to apply Pythagoras theorem. So Pythagoras theorem, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So your c squared is actually your ab squared. And then you can let this equals to your a, so it's equals to a squared, and let this equals to b, so plus b squared. So the, the formula to find length ab would just be square root of uh, this guy, this, this whole chunk of thing. So this, this is the formula. This will be the formula to find the length of any line segment. Okay, horizontal, vertical, slanted, any line segment. Right, let's look at this question. There are two parts to this question, part A and B. Part A, we are given two points uh, where they are labelled as point A and B. And part B, we are given another two points labelled as C and D. Right, to start off, let's do a recap. Right, what's the recap? The recap is to write down the formula, okay, for finding... Uh, the line segment. Supposing if we have two points, right, the first point is A, and I'm going to label it as uh, the x coordinate as x1, y1, and then point B, the x coordinate and the y coordinate as x2, y2, right, so the length of the line segment joining these two points, what it means is that you have two points here. Right, so the length will refer to here. Okay, so to find that length or the distance, you can also call it the distance. Right, the formula would be... Alright, so this formula is actually based on uh, Pythagoras theorem. Right, you can, you can derive this formula using Pythagoras theorem. But in this uh, video, we are just more concerned about how we can actually apply this formula, right? So let's look at part A. So what's the first step that you need to do? It's very important. A lot of students actually, uh, what do you call that? Uh, neglect doing this part. But doing this part is very important. And that is to label your points. Right, label the point as x1, y1. 
and x2, y2. So there are two points there. So you can label your point A. That's, uh, that means you let the x coordinate of point A to be x1, let the y coordinates of point A to be y1. And for point B, let the x coordinate be labeled as x2, and the y coordinates of point B as y2. Okay, then the next step is let's write down the formula. All right, so we can just substitute in, right? So how do you substitute in? So you refer to your laboring again, your x2 here. This will be the value 7, and then your x1 will be the value 3. So if you look at your y coordinates, your y2 will be the number 2, and then your y1 will be also the number 2. So that's how we substitute to get this value here. And this, you can just easily use a calculator to evaluate. Just make sure that you press the square root sign on the calculator. Bracket 7 minus 3, close bracket, square, plus open bracket again, 2 minus 2, close bracket, and then square. And then you get 4 units as the answer. Right, so there's a question that uh, I'd like you to think about. The question is that, can I label the points as... Uh, for point A, instead of labeling it as x1, y1, can I label it as x2, y2? And for point B, label it as x1, y1 instead. That means I do the reverse as what I've done earlier. So the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Why? Because you still get the same answer. Okay, you still get the same answer. Right, so let's do right, so let's look at part B. So for part B, yes, uh, do, not, do not neglect the steps of labeling the point. So I'm gonna label point C as x2, y2, point D as x1, y1. And then let's write down the formula. Right. So you substitute in the values. So the values for x2 will be 4, x1 will be uh, 4 also. The values for y2 will be 5 and the values for y1 to be negative 3. Okay, and use your calculator to evaluate get 8 units. So again, I have a question for you. So what is it that you have to take note when you're substituting the values of x and y into the formula? Yes, why do you think I highlight bracket negative 3? Yes, this is something you have to take note. All right, if you have a negative value, right, it is very important that you bracket it. Because if you don't bracket it, okay, if you don't bracket the negative 3, you may end up getting something like this. And then this is not the correct answer. All right, so it's very important that if you have a negative value, Okay, it's very, very important that you bracket it. So in this case here, there will be two brackets here. Okay, a smaller one inside and then a bigger one outside. All right, so let's look at these questions. So you're given a triangle and this triangle had uh, three points, three vertices. And you're asked to show the triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle. Right, so before we do this question, let's do a recap on what is an isosceles triangle. So an isosceles triangle is one where you have two of the sides having the same length. So it can be this way, it can be this. Right, so the hint given there is to find the length of all the three sides. And then we show that uh, two of them have the same value and that proves that uh, it's an isosceles triangle so to before we do this question i think it's good that we do a sketch of the diagram you don't need to be very accurate so let's have this point as negative one negative two and then we have a point B that it's uh, 1, 8. And a point C that is negative 5. So I need to extend this longer. 
So negative 5, 4. So if we join these three sides, join these three points, you can see that we have a triangle, ABC, right? And we need to show that this is an isosceles triangle. All right, so that's fine. distance for all these three lines. Let's start off by finding the distance for AB. Right, so let's do the uh, laboring again. You can label this as X1, Y1. This is X2, Y2. Okay, let's write down the formula. So you have to remember the formula. It's quite easy to remember. There's a square root there and then there's a bracket. X1, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. All right, so that so there's another question that you may want to ask. Is that is that can I instead of using x2, I just use x1 first? Well, you can, but if you want to use x1 minus x2, then for the y coordinates, you will have to use y1 minus y2 squared. Okay, you have to follow the order. That means if you start off with x1 minus x2, then for the y coordinate, it has to be y1 minus y2. If you start off with x2 minus x1, then for the y coordinate, you have to start with y2. So this is something you have to take note. Otherwise, you won't get the correct answer. Okay, so let's do the substitution. So the values for x2 will be 1 minus value for x1 is negative 1. So as we mentioned earlier on, if it's negative 1, you make sure you bracket it. Then y2 is 8 minus, again, bracket negative 2. Right. And this, you can just use your calculator to work this out. That will give you square root bracket 1 minus bracket negative 1. Bracket again. square plus bracket 8 minus bracket negative 2 close close square right and you will get uh, you can express your answer to three significant figure that will be 10.2 units all right so let's do the same for bc So in this case here, I would label, I've already labeled point B as x2, y2, so I'm just going to label this as x1, y1. Okay, so that's fine, B, C. Right, let's write down the formula. Right, so I have x2, which is uh, 1 minus bracket negative 5, close bracket, close bracket again, square, plus y2, which is 8 minus 4, close bracket, square. All right, then you can use your calculator to work it out. Right, you get 7.2. Two one. Express two. It's it's not an exact value, so you just put it to two decimal places. Seven point two one units. All right. So let's go on to find the this the length for AC. All right. So if you look at AC, actually, both points are being labeled x one y one. So what you can do is you can change this, right, to x two y two instead. Or you can change your point A to x2, y2, okay, depending on uh, your preference. Uh. So let's do AC. All right, similarly, let's write down the formula. And I would have x2, which is negative 5, minus 
bracket negative 1, close bracket again, square. So this part here, you have to be very careful, okay? It's not difficult to find the length of uh, two points, but uh, the substitution, you have to be very careful. So if you see again, your y1 is a negative value, so you need to bracket it, bracket negative 2, close, close bracket, then square. And then you can just go ahead and use a calculator to work it out. So when you use a calculator, also be very careful. Okay, press the square root sign first. Press bracket negative 5, followed by minus bracket minus 1, close bracket. And then close again, square it. Then plus open bracket 4, minus open bracket negative 2, close, close, square. And you get 7.21. Right, so we see that there are two line segments that have the same length, BC and AC. Right, so we can conclude, we can answer the questions uh, with the concluding statement. So what is the concluding statement? So we can say that uh, since... BC, that means the length of BC is equal to the length of AC, right, which is equal to 7.21 units. Alright, that means your BC is equal to your AC, right. So we can say that uh, therefore, triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle. Okay, so this is how you do it. Okay, so this question is from your textbook practice now too. So having practiced um, all the skills that we need to find the length of a line segment, let's look at uh, a rather challenging questions. So you're given two points C and D, and then you're told that there's a third point E that lies on the y axis, such that the, the length, the C, D, the distance between point C and E is equal to the distance between point D and E. So this is the question of coordinate geometry, so it's very advisable to have a diagram. Now your diagram need not to be very accurate, okay? But, but if you look at point C, the y coordinate is negative 1, so definitely you have to draw it below the x-axis. And if you look at the x coordinate of point D is negative, so you have to go to the left side of the y-axis. So this point here lies on the y-axis. Any point that lies on the y-axis will have x coordinate 0. So we're going to call it a 0, comma y. So we need to find this unknown value. So how do we do it? Alright, first we draw a line segment joining point E and C. And we draw another line segment joining point E and D. So these two line segments are supposed to be equal to each other. So first thing first, okay, let's label. Wait, let me erase off this. Let's label the two points as x1, y1 x2, y2. And then we write down the formula to find DE. So this formula, you have to remember it. right? And then sub in the values for x2, which is negative 2. Make sure you bracket it. Bracket negative 2 minus 0, close bracket squared, plus bracket 7 minus y, close bracket squared. So the substitution, you have to be very careful. Substitute in correctly, properly. Same, and then uh, use a calculator to simplify bracket negative 2 minus 0, close bracket squared. That gives you 4. This guy here, you cannot use calculator to simplify anything. Okay, so just leave it alone. All right, so the next step is to find the distance CE. All right, write down the formula, same thing. Label your point, uh, just now we use D and E. So they, so you already label point E as X1, Y1. So your point C, you have to label it as X2, Y2. Okay, sub into the values. So what I would advise you is that uh, maybe you can just use the eraser and can erase of this so not to confuse your x2 y2 with this new x2 y2 okay right so similarly you can use a calculator to work this guy out okay and then that will give you square root 16 plus bracket minus 1 minus uh, minus 1 minus y squared all right so those these two length must be the same okay it must be the same Right, so since the distance of CE is equal to DE, okay, 
So we continue from the previous side, slides. So how do we get rid of the square root sign? To get rid of the square root sign, we just basically square both sides. We've already learned this in the chapter and in uh, chapter uh, under this topic called search. So you just square it. And then when you square it, you square a, a radical sign. The radical sign basically will be gone. So here you have to be very careful. Why be kept very careful? Because this part here, we're going to use the algebraic identity to expand. <coughs> Likewise for this also, this will be using a minus b squared. So when you use algebraic identity to expand these two terms, you have to pay very attention to your algebraic manipulations. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't know that I actually have a part there. Okay, never mind. Let's, let me erase this. <coughs> okay. Right, so that's uh, expand it properly. <coughs> then you have to simplify it. Okay, pay attention to this. Particularly pay attention to this guy here. Okay, so that will give you positive 2y plus y squared. Right, and then you simplify further, you will have 16y equals to 36. So y will be 36 divided by 16, give 2 and 1 quarter. So therefore, your point E will be 0, 2 and 1 quarter. You ask to find the coordinates of point E, so it is very important that you answer to the question asked. Okay, so you have to put your answer in this format. Right, so what happened next is that you have another point. So now this point does not lie on the y-axis anymore, it lies on the x-axis. So basically what this question is trying to tell you are two things. That uh, knowing the coordinates of any point that lies on the y-axis, any point that lies on the y-axis, x coordinate will be zero. Any point that lies on the x-axis, the y coordinate will be zero. So this is the first concept they're testing you. Second concept, of course, is to apply the formula to fine line segment. So as usual, okay, let's have a sketch of the diagram. Again, we do not know particularly where this point lies, where, where is exact, exact locations on the x-axis. So we just randomly have a point there, what we call it f bracket x comma zero. Okay, why is it called f? Because it's requested in the question here, point f. All right, so the same join the line segment, yes, as usual, and then these two line segments must be the same. Okay, so label the point, and then uh, go on to find your CF. Okay, similarly, also go on to find DF. And then I'll meet you in the next slide. Right, so we are told that this the two distance are the same, CF equals to DF. So we've already found the distance for CF, also found the distance for DF, right? So to, in order to remove the radical sign, we just square both sides, and then your radical sign will be gone, okay? And be very careful when you use your algebraic identity to, to expand bracket negative 2 minus x close bracket squared. So I have done here some coloring for you, some high, high uh, lighting so that you can see uh, how you can substitute incorrectly. Okay, a lot of algebraic manipulations here, so you have to be very, very careful. And finally, you have negative 12x equals to 36, so x is equals to negative 3. So therefore, your point F actually lies on the other side of your x-axis. So your point F is negative 3, 0. Right, so the last part of the question is asked to find the area of triangle OEF. Okay, so let's write down the points that we have found for E and the points for F. So we have found point E to be 0, comma, 2 and 1 quarter. That point will lie on the y-axis. And point F, comma, 3, uh, negative 3, comma, 0, that point will lie on the x-axis. So let's sketch these two points. So right now we know exactly where point F is. Previously we do not know, so it doesn't matter. But now we know that point F has negative 3 as the x coordinate. So let's sketch it properly, correctly, not properly, sorry, correctly. The next thing, can you see that we can actually form a right angle triangle? Yes. So how do we find area of a right angle triangle? Yes, we use half time base time height. So in this case here, your base will be the distance OF and the height will be your distance OE. So we sub in the values. The distance, the horizontal distance OF will be just three units. 
okay, we are talking about area, so we ignore the negative, so three units. And the vertical distance, okay, will be two and one quarter. Use a calculator to evaluate. You get three and three over eight units squared as an area. All right, so practice now three is also from your textbook. So in this question here, we are supposed to show the triangle DEF is a right angle triangle. And then we need to identify where is the right angle. So as usual, coordinate geometry that sketch the diagram. So we have basically three points there. All right, don't need to be very exact, but you also need to be very careful. Like what I mentioned, if it's negative one, negative three, for example, this particular point here, you have to make sure it's at this quadrant. All right, so let's join them using line segments. Right, so to prove this is a right angle triangle, right? Okay, what theorem, what theorem do you need to use to prove it's a right angle triangle? Yes, of course, Pythagoras theorem. So to use Pythagoras theorem, basically, we just have to find the length, okay? So there are three lengths here we have to find, D, E, D, F, and E, F. Okay, so we have done enough questions that uh, I'm going to skip your X laboring. So you should do the laboring. Very important is to do the laboring so that you substitute incorrectly. Okay, do not use a calculator to work out the whole thing. Okay, it's very important. You only use a calculator to work out the one that I'm going to highlight. Only that portion, the highlighted one in yellow, use calculator to work out to be 20. So leave your answer at square root 20. Likewise for DF, leave your answer at square root 65. Okay, similarly for EF. Leave your answer as square root 45. Okay, I'll meet you in the next slide. All right, so we let's write down all the values we found for D, E, E, F, and D, F. So to use Pythagoras theorem, you recall Pythagoras theorem is, let's draw a proper diagram. So Pythagoras theorem is c squared equals to a squared plus b squared. Hence, we need to square root your de, we need to square root your ef, and also to, uh, sorry, hence we need to square, wrong, rewind. Hence, we need to square df. So we square df, you get d, uh, sorry, square de, you get de squared. So square, square root 20, you just get 20. Likewise also, you square, square root 45, you get 45. And uh, also for df squared, you get 65. Okay. So are you able to see some connections? You will see that if you take 20 plus 45, you add this two up. Can you see that it actually equals to 65? Okay, so what does it tell us? That means your DE squared plus EF squared, which is 20 plus 45 equals to 65. And 65 happened to be the length of EF squared. So if you're going to use Pythagoras theorem, what we are saying is this guy here, B squared plus A squared, or oh, okay, or oh, we use A squared first, sorry. So A squared plus B squared is just equals to your C squared, right? So therefore, we can conclude that your triangle DEF is a right angle triangle. Using converse of Pythagoras theorem, okay, this part here is very important because we are actually proving a triangle is a right angle. So it's not Pythagoras theorem, but it's the converse, means the going backward. Going the other way around, not backwards. So I'm going the other way around. So it's called converse of the Pythagoras theorem. Okay, and if you go back to the diagram, uh, and you will see that it's angle D F that's 90 degrees. Okay, so this completes the whole uh, HBR lessons on coordinate geometry. So your homework will, is to complete uh, will complete. Sorry, your homework is to complete assignment 4.1. All right, to be submitted when the school is open.